here you are, my friend. You're coming back. But we're here to share with you the gospel of Jesus Christ. You can be I set free. You won't shut up about it. Okay, we don't want you to die in your sin, my friend. I want you to be so filled with his spirit. Why don't you come over here and talk? All right. Hope you're born again, sir. Hope you're born again. What does it mean to be born again? Great question. Be born again means that once you once you repent of your sins and you ask for forgiveness, the old you dies in a spiritual death and you're given the Holy Spirit. It's in the book of John. It, it's described as the, the comforter. Jesus will send you the Holy Spirit to live inside of you. How you doing, my man? God bless you. You love Jesus? Born again? You following him? Okay, God bless you, my man. You, you gotta, gotta follow him. You gotta put your faith in him. He's coming soon. You know? And so he's looking for his church without spot, wrinkle, or blemish. And he doesn't want us to be lukewarm. He wants us to be on fire for him. So make sure you're reading your Bible and seeking his will over your life daily, all right? I definitely appreciate your, 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 your yeah, I, I, I appreciate your support, my man. But I, I really want to see, I want to see you in heaven. So if you know, we, it's by grace we, we are saved through faith, not of works. It's the gift of God. It's the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. So we were saved by grace, but it's through faith, right? So the Bible says, uh, Abraham believed God, and it was accounted to him for righteousness. So it's trusting, it's fully putting your uh, full faith and trust in Jesus, so that when you're seeking His His way by way of the work, by way of uh, His work, that He's doing His cleansing work in your heart, so you're not going to sin anymore. Like you're not going going to getting uh parties and getting drunk you're not fornicating you know you're he's doing a work in your heart where you no longer desire those things and that's what that's what uh your own personal miracle will be when the holy spirit dwells in you and gives you those desires so god bless you what's your name man dominic nice to meet you dominic i'm rome like italy nice to meet you thank you for your support man keep following jesus He reached down to us. Every other religion talks about us reaching, trying to reach him. But he reached to us and did for us what we couldn't do for ourselves. And by believing in his words that he has covered our debt through his death, then we can be born again. That's what born again means. To First, let's get to repentance, to change our mind, to change the direction we're going, to change our viewpoint, to agree with the Holy God, to not allow pride to keep us in a place of torment, lies, deceit, and death. We must come to a place of humility and humbleness and say, you are right, God. I need a savior. And he just takes your hand. And his sacrifice on the cross, which we should have actually been on that, because we should have died. But he exchanged places. How was he able to change places with us? What He was perfect without sin. And he paid the debt for us. That's why the Bible says there's no boasting on our part. We cannot brag on anything and say that I did X, Y, Z. Christ did it all. It's through his death, burial, and resurrection that we have life eternal. And all we have to do is to believe. It's by faith that we are saved through grace in a gift, an unmerited something we didn't work for, an unmerited gift. It's by faith, by grace through faith that we are saved, not by works that any man should boast. So now, because I agree with him, I've changed directions and I say, you are correct, God. You know my heart, you see me when I'm alone. You know the depths of my soul and you know what I think, what I feel, you know everything about me because you are my designer. You created me. And I agree with you. And I accept the free gift of salvation. And when we do that, we're born 
again, just like we were born naturally of water, we were born naturally, now we're born by the Spirit. And we have a new heart. He places his word actually in us. He comes to live in us, to help us, to encourage us, to strengthen us, to do the things that he calls us to do. That's the good news. When you see that you step from what you truly deserve, and now you've stepped into a life that you did not deserve, but which he richly gave on our behalf. So we now have a new life in Christ Jesus. The things that we thought were cool, the things that we thought were right before, we realize now that they are not right. And we also realize when we accept him as our savior, we have the strength to actually walk in the manner that we should walk in. See, oftentimes good people, they struggle. They want to do right, but they can't because they're relying on their own strength. They're relying on their own ability. And some of you know exactly what we're talking about. How many times have you not want to do something? And before you know it, you're down in the depths of despair. But that no longer is the case when you have Christ living in you. He becomes your power. He becomes your desire. He becomes your love. And now you're fulfilling the very first commandment of the moral law. And that is to love the Lord your God with all of your heart, your soul, and your mind. To put him first. You are filled with a joy that passes all understanding. You are filled with a peace that no one, no man can take away. You have been given life, life now and life everlasting. Agreeing with your creator, you have a designer. There's so many things that we accept as truth just by looking here. We can look at these buildings. These buildings are very beautiful. And we can say there is someone that have designed, had a, had a vision for these buildings and designed these buildings. You can look at a beautiful painting that speaks to you. And you can say, some artist is behind this. Some artist created this. You know there is an artist behind that beautiful painting. But yet, we cannot see the intricacies, the in-depth beauty of man and nature. And we want to say it just came into being all by itself. There is not, there is not just a designer behind your creation, the earth's creation. There's an intelligent designer. There is a personal designer because we have been given choice God is real. God is alive. And any time your heart wants to decline and reject what you do know is true, it's the enemy of your soul that wants to blind you and keep you from knowing the truth. It says there is a God of this world. And the God of this world is your enemy. And he blinds the minds of those so they cannot see the truth. Because if you know the truth, the truth will set you free. And whom the Son has set free is truly free indeed. To be absent from the body is to be before God. And why is this urgent? Because you don't know where death is. You know, I heard the tragic news earlier today that a bridge in Baltimore collapsed. There are people missing, there's injuries, there's death. When those people left their homes this morning, they saw it as a regular day. They were going about their normal business. They ate breakfast perhaps this morning. They said goodbye to their families. And they woke up to what they did the day before and the day before that, and what they thought they were gonna do today. But some of them met their demise. It's over. 
their life is gone. They are now dead and they have no choice. They don't have the opportunity to make a choice now. This is the urgency of this message. The word of God says today is the day of salvation. Make your choice today, don't keep waiting because we don't know what tomorrow brings. We don't know what the next hour brings. Can you confidently say, you know where you will be when you pass this life? Can you with confidence say, you know that you're safe in the arms of your creator? And if you can't confidently say that, please talk to me. Talk to one other of my brothers that are in the crowd and just ask the question. We want dialogue. There's so many angry people out here. Our message is not angry. Our message is a message of love and a message of concern for your eternal salvation. The Bible says, what will a man give for his life? Is there enough money on this earth? Is there enough riches? How much money could someone give you today in exchange for your soul, your everlasting soul? Is there enough women to have you choose a relationship over your, over your eternal life? What pleasure can you think of that is more important than your soul? Don't look at man, man will uh, fail you. Don't even, you know, everyone who says that they're a Christ follower, follower is not. It doesn't matter what a person says, look at the fruit of their life. It doesn't matter what comes out of a person's uh, mouth. What matters is how are they living your, their lives? Have they betrayed you? Have they let you down? Have parents let you down? Have you, has your best friend let you down? Have relationships? left you wanting and left you down. Come to the one who will never forsake you, who will never leave you. It is the most courageous thing to speak truth while everyone else is against you. That's true love. When someone just doesn't say what you wanna hear, do you know a person who truly loves you will tell you what you need to hear? A person who doesn't love you will tell you what you want to hear. Did you get that? Someone who does not love you, well, I will. Where are you? I can face you when you say it. <laughs> when someone tells you what you don't want to hear, it's because they love you. Because they are now at risk of losing your friendship. But a person who tells you just what you want to hear, they're not at risk now of losing your friendship. So they think more about themselves than you. Let truth reign and rule in your mind, your soul, your heart. Let truth reign in your lives. Let life speak life and not death to your friends, to your family, to yourself. You are valuable. You are worthy of God's love because he said so. He desires to give you life and to give it abundantly. He loves you. He desires you to be with him for all eternity. Where there is true joy, where there is no tears, where there's no sadness, there's no ugliness, there's no darkness. Choose life. Choose truth. Don't keep deceiving yourselves. Stand up for truth. Love the Lord your God with all of your heart, your soul, and your mind. There's no other name, friends, but the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. That name is power. Hallelujah. That name is freedom. Hallelujah. That name is hope. You can only find hope in Jesus Christ, my friends. There's no hope in man. There's no hope in man. You see, because even the most 
trustworthy man on the planet, even the most trustworthy man is going to die. And that's the truth, my friends. We all have a date with death. The Bible says that the wages of sin is death. And all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. So my friends, what you need is you need to have forgiveness. See, the wrath of God abides upon those who have sinned against God. And we all have. So right now, his wrath abides upon you. His wrath abides upon us. And so we need to know that we need to be forgiven. You have to be forgiven, friends. You have to be forgiven. You need the forgiveness of God that's offered to you through Jesus Christ. This is why we're here today. You know, this is a very important message for each and every one of you. You got to, you got to understand that you have a date with death. Right now, you are on death row. Mankind is on death row. The wages of sin is death. So just as a criminal, when he's put on death row for, say, murder, he goes into a cell block and he does not know when he's going to be executed. He doesn't know the day that it's going to happen. He just knows it's coming. It's the same for me and you. We all know we're going to be executed. We all know we're going to die. We don't know when that date is coming. But we have hope. Hallelujah. You see, because we sinned, just as the criminal was sentenced to death and has no hope, right? Because he's going to be sentenced to death. He, 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 com he committed crime worthy of death. He murdered. He has no hope. But you and I, just under that same condemnation, under that same condemnation, the wages of sin is death. Being sentenced to death, you and I, we have hope. Because the death comes from the wrath of God. Because we sinned against God. But you and I, we can be forgiven by what Jesus did on that cross just 2,000 years ago. If you turn to the Lord Jesus today, you can receive the forgiveness of Christ. Jesus Christ says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believe on him should not perish, but have everlasting life. So this gift is for anyone who believes on the Son. This gift is for anyone who's willing to turn from their sin and put their faith and trust in Jesus Christ. Certainly you can't play the hypocrite, right? Just like the criminal who's been sentenced to death, if he for some reason would have hope, if he for some reason would be forgiven for his murder, he's not gonna go back out and murder again. No, he's going to be thankful that he was forgiven. He's gonna be thankful that he that the judge decided not to execute him. And so this is what happened with what Jesus did for us. When he died on that cross, he took upon our sin. It wasn't just God just deciding to change his mind and no longer uh, 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 put us to death. But God being a perfect and holy just God, he has to execute judgment on sin. He has to because he's perfect, holy, and just. And so this is where the righteous provision came into play. This is how he was able to be just with us. That he put on his wrath upon one who did not deserve it. One who was completely without blemish. You see, I can't die for your sins, you can't die for my sins. I can't die for your sins because I have my own sins to account for. The wages of sin is death. You can't die for my sin because you got your own sin to account for. The wages of sin is death. So we have, a, we have an issue there, friends. We have no hope, no hope apart from the Holy One, apart from the one who did not deserve to die, but died on account of all men, died on that cross for all men. You see, all men and women across the world whole face of the earth he suffered and died on that cross for you and then he rose again on the third day and this is how we know that he's everything that he taught was true 
this is how we know that Jesus wasn't just some wise man. He wasn't just some extremely uh, intelligent man who walked the earth and said some amazing things. No, he was who he said he was. He was God in the flesh. And he rose again on the third day. You know, my friends, this is something that was difficult for me to believe as an atheist. When I was an atheist, I did not believe in Jesus Christ. I didn't believe Jesus rose from the grave. But my friends, you cannot find a grave site for Jesus Christ. Why can't we find the bones of Jesus Christ? We've got the bones of 5,000 plus year old mummies. Where are the bones of Jesus, my friend? We got the bones of Muhammad. We know where Buddha's grave site was. Where are the bones of the most well-documented man in history? What year are we in, my friends? What year are we in? We're in year 2024. 2024 years after what? After the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. You see, you can't even proclaim your own birth date without proclaiming Jesus Christ. That's not by accident. No man becomes that famous by accident, my friends. Only by supernatural causes could that take place. And we know that Jesus indeed rose from the grave to make that happen. So each and every one of you profess his name even in your birth date. Every time that you write your birth date down, you write June 23rd, 2002, 2002 years after Jesus Christ died and rose again. That's what you're writing down. The whole world has to profess Jesus Christ. The Bible says every knee shall bow and every tongue shall, shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. You see, Jesus is the name above every name. There's no other name given under heaven among men whereby we must be saved. Why are you shaking your head, sir? Come talk to me. Why are you shaking your head to the truth? We are here to share the truth with you. We want, to, we want you to have everlasting life. We want this free gift of Jesus Christ to be given to all. And it is, it is provided for all who will repent and put their faith and trust in Jesus. Put your faith and trust in the one you proclaim every single day. You proclaim him when you write your birth date. You proclaim him when you blaspheme him. You, can you think of anybody? Can you think of one name? One man's name or a woman's name that you use as a cuss word? Can you think of any, any, any name that you use as a cuss word? Do you use your mother's name as a cuss word? Do you use your teacher's name as a cuss word? Do you use your professor's name as a cuss word? Do you use your friend's name as a cuss word? No, whether you are Buddhist, whether you are uh, Muslim, whether you, uh, you, whatever religion you follow, whose name do you use as a cuss word? You use Jesus Christ. Do you ever wonder why that is? The Bible says, Jesus says, this world hates me because I testify of it that its deeds are evil. The reason why you use Jesus's name as a cuss word is because you hate him in your heart. Whether you say you do or not, the world hates him. He said it. 2,000 years ago, he already prophesied. He says, this world hates me because I testify of it that its deeds are evil. So you t he testifies. He testifies that fornication is evil. You hate that. You hate that because you love fornication. You love to have sex outside of marriage. You enjoy it. Jesus testifies that idolatry is evil. You hate that because you love idolizing your video games. You love idolizing your sports players. You love idolizing your uh, actresses and actors. You love idolizing Hollywood. You see, idolizing is putting anything above God. So if you have not uh, uh, put God first, God bless you, my friend. We're here for you. And if you're, you're talking, you're talking about, God bless you. We're, we're talking about Jesus Christ. You just said freedom and I'm, I'm expressing that freedom. Well, we want, we want you to, we want you to be set free, my friend. We want you to live. We don't want you to die in your sin. And that's why we're here. You see, this world testifies or this world hates me. Jesus says this world hates me because I testify of it that his deeds are evil. See this man. 
He has all that hate in his heart, and obviously here I am, I'm just speaking very calmly out here, talking about the, the love of Jesus Christ, talking about the truth. And instead, he's just, he's losing his mind. See, you see? And here you are, my friend, you're coming back. But we're here to share with you the gospel of Jesus Christ. You can be set free. You won't shut up about it. Okay, we don't want you to die in your sin, my friend. What do you think about Jesus Christ? I don't give a shit. You can enjoy your fucking... Where are you going to be when you die? Friend as much as you like. Where are you going to be but when you die? Get out of my life. Where are you going to be when you die? I, you're, I'm not, no I'm not keeping you here. Existing. Well, well your, your soul is going to go on for eternity. That's what I'm here to tell you. Your soul is eternal. You've been given life, and life will continue. And you're going to have a choice whether you're going to live forever with God or you're going to live forever in hellfire. And that's, that's, your, that's your two choices after you die. And that's, the, that's just the truth of life, my friends. The soul is eternal. It goes on to live after this. So you can choose where, where you're going to go because God has given you that, that choice. You can choose to surrender to Jesus Christ or you can choose to reject him and you'll end up in the other side. How can I help you today? God bless you, my friend. Do you love Jesus? You born again? God bless you, my man. All right. Praise God. Continue. Praise God. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. You see, we're out here sharing the love of Christ. We want you to, we want you to, we want your soul to be saved in the last days. You see, we don't want you to go to hell and reject this great gift of life because you show that you enjoy life. You know, even that man who came over here screaming at me, he shows that he enjoys his life by how he preserves his life, right? You know, he makes sure that he uh, nurtures his body, right? He eats. He makes sure that he has good sleep. He comes to school to learn and to gain money that he can uh, enjoy more things in this life, but never really receiving and understanding that this life has been given to him as a gift. You know, and that's what we have to understand that you were given this life as a gift. You, you show that you appreciate this life. Why wouldn't you try to keep it forever? Why would you reject the one who gave you this life, who wants you to keep it, but the way that you're going to keep it is you have to put your faith and trust in Jesus. You see, you gotta put your faith and trust in the one who gave you that life that you enjoy so much. See? And so this is what we have to ask ourselves my friends, we, we do, we, we, we enjoy this life, but we want to live it the way we want to live it. It's kind of like when you stand, when, when you're in your parents' house, right? You kind of want that lawlessness. You want to be able to eat candy when you want to eat candy, right? You want to eat candy for breakfast or have ice cream for breakfast, or you want to stay up all night, or you want to uh, be able to write on the walls in your house, right? Your parents have rules. All right, and that's how they keep their house in order. You, know, you gotta listen to your parents. So it's the same thing in God's kingdom, right? He's not gonna just have us live any time, any way we want to. So right now in this short little life that we have on this earth, we're, start, we're, we're, we're supposed to be drawing near to that creator who created us. We're supposed to be drawing near to that one who gave us this life, who gave us life uh, to live and who offers it for eternity. We're supposed to seek him and find out why, what is it that, what was the purpose of why he gave me this life? You see, I can, if, if, I, if I buy a knife for you, if I buy a knife for you to cut your sandwich, right? And I hand you your knife and I say, here you go, now you can cut your sandwich in half. And you take that knife and you stab the person next to you. Did you use that knife for the purpose that I gave it to you for? No, you perverted its purpose. You took that knife and you used it for evil when I meant for you to use it for good. Well, this is what God does for each and every one of us. That's when he breathes life into each and every one of us. He gave us uh, a, a free will to make a decision whether or not what we want to do with that life that he gave us. Now we can use it and we can pervert its meaning. We can use it to, uh, for perversions, right? Or we can seek God for the purpose for why he gave us life. That's what we're supposed to all do. We're supposed to seek our creator. 
because we show that we value life in everything that we do. When we nourish our bodies for food, we show that we value life. When we find enjoyment in the things that we do, we show that we value life. When we go to a doctor, when we get sick, we show that we value life. And so this is what we're trying to tell you today. We're trying to tell you to plan, plan for your, your future. You see, right now you think that you're planning for your future, but you're only planning for 80 years. You think you're going to live 80 years. And so what you're doing is you're planning for birthdays. You're planning for uh, different parties, different engagements. You're planning, uh, you might be planning for uh, becoming, uh, getting a great job, right? You're coming to this school to plan to get a great job to make money. Some of you are working right now. You're planning for retirement. You're putting away money for retirement. But here's where you err. You plan for 80 years, but you don't plan for eternity. You plan for this short little blip of time that you're going to be breathing for, but you don't plan for your eternal soul. That's what you gotta plan for, my friends. You gotta plan for your eternal soul. Your, your soul is, e is eternal. And so this is what you gotta plan for. You gotta start asking, why am I here? You gotta start asking, what is the truth? What is, what is the truth about life? And when you don't ask these questions, you are walking blindly. And if you walk blindly, you're gonna fall into a ditch. If you drive blindly, you're gonna collide into something or someone. And you're going to, when you walk blindly, you're walking into destruction. And so, what we want you to do is we don't want you to walk blindly. We want you to walk in the light of Christ. The Bible says that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not practice the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. Did you hear that, my friends? The Bible says that Jesus Christ is able to cleanse you from your sin. If you walk in the marvelous light of Christ, if you walk in the marvelous light of God. And so he has provided that light through Jesus Christ. He's provided that light through his living, breathing word, the word of God. You see today, normally when I go out, when I, when, when we go out to preach, I'll have my, my physical Bible with me. This today I left without my Bible. And I can tell you right now, as a Christian, as a true born again Christian, without my Bible, I feel naked, I feel exposed, I feel weak. Because that Bible is, our, is my foundation to life. That Bible is my moral compass. And it is each and every one of our moral compass. You'll find that your own conscience aligns with the things of the Bible. Unless you've already seared it, you'll know that you've done things in your own conscience to violate your conscience, right? And you'll find that what you violated, whatever it is in your conscience, it aligns with the things of the Bible. You see, that, that conscience is what was put there by God. God put that conscience there for you. you see, a conscience is with knowledge. Everybody has it. And that conscience is what's going to testify of you that you sinned against God on judgment day. So when we feel guilt, when we violate our conscience, it's telling us, it's telling us that we're going to be judged one day. That, this, is, this is why we fear death, friends. This is why we fear death. But those of us who are Christian, those of us who, who have the truth, we, we do not fear death because we're not going to die. Sure, this, we're gonna, as the Bible says, put off this tent, this body of death but we're going to go off to be with the lord you see because we sought after the lord but i can tell you my friends we were all just the same way as you i i know for me uh when i went to college i i i believed the lie i came to believe the lie that i was that i evolved from an ape but that's foolish my friends how do you if we evolve from an ape where where are the ape hybrids do you see any ape hybrids it just does not compute, my friend. It doesn't work. Uh, the, the Darwinianism does not work, my friend. So you, you, you have to let go of the lie. The reason why you believe the lie, it, the Bible tells you. Jesus says, 
everyone who practices evil hates the light and does not come to the light lest his deeds be exposed. So Jesus says you don't come to the light, you don't come to the truth, you accept the lie because you don't want to stop sinning. You don't want you want to you want to remain in your sin without conviction. And so this is the reason why you won't step away or you won't uh, come to Jesus is because Jesus does not like your sin. And that's what Jesus is saying. He's saying he lights, he shines a light over your sin. And so this is the reason why you don't come to him. You see, you, you stay in your darkness because you don't want your sin exposed. But Jesus is not going to allow for sin to continue on in his kingdom. But if you're willing, if you're able, if you're willing, he's going to wash you clean of that sin. He's going to take away whatever it is that, 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 that uh, you desire more than Christ. If you cry out to him, he's willing to give you a new heart. He's willing to give you new desires. Okay, and this is, this is that cure to cancer, to the proverbial cancer. You see, the, the, the cancer of life is sin. The cancer of life is sin. And so your cure to your cancer of life, which is sin, is Jesus Christ. Jesus promises to give you the Holy Spirit of God, who's going to change your heart and desires, where you will no longer desire living after, an, uh, after sin, but you'll desire a true life with God. You will desire seeking and pleasing the Lord, pleasing the creator of your soul, the creator of your life, the creator of the things around you. And that's who you want to seek after, my friends. You want to seek after him. You want to please him because he created you. And if you enjoy this life, then you want to show your appreciation for this life by walking in obedience for the one who, uh, toward the one who created it for you. And in order to do that, you have to get right with him. You see, right now his wrath abides, abides upon you because you've sinned against him. His wrath abided upon me when I sinned against him. But I had to repent. I had to turn from sin, put my faith and trust in Jesus Christ. And that's when he offered to give me his Holy Spirit. You can film me, my friend. I'm not, I'm not afraid. You can, come, you can come film me. Come talk to me, my man. You don't have to be a coward. And, you know, it's got to be a coward and walking by with his cell phone. <laughs> like I can't tell he's filming me. I'm not afraid to be filmed. But, my friends, this is, this is what we have to do. We have to, we, we have to start asking these types of questions. We have to start asking why we're here. Why, what is the purpose of life? We can't continue to walk and pervert life. We have to understand what is the purpose. Why am I here? Why did my, my creator put me here? Like that analogy I gave you before. If I give you a knife to cut your sandwich and you use that knife to go stab your friend, you have perverted the, the purpose for why I gave you that knife. I gave you that knife to do something good with it, to cut your sandwich in half. But you decided to use it for evil and pervert that use of it. And so this is what God is saying each and every one of us has done against him. We've taken the lives that we appreciate, that we love, right? We love life. We show that we love life. And we've used it for perversions. We've used it for fornication. We used it for idolatry. We've used it for adultery. We've used it for homosexuality. We've used it for drunkenness. You see, all these things are sin. And God is saying this, this is a perversion of what he gave you life for. But praise be to God through Jesus Christ. He understands that this is a sickness. This is an illness that we have within us, a desire for sin, a desire for perversions. And he's willing to take that from us, to cleanse us if we cry out to him. The Bible says in Ezekiel 36 and 26, I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit within you. It says, I will take the heart of stone out of your flesh and give you a heart of flesh. It says, I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk after my statutes and you'll keep my judgments and do them. You see, when, when God gives you the Holy Spirit, when you become born again, you are given new desires. No longer do you have those desires to walk after sin. In fact, when, if in the case that you do sin, you get no pleasure out of it. So 
it's not that you can't sin when the Holy Spirit comes to dwell within you. It's not like God has taken your free will from you. But what he has done is he's done a supernatural thing in your heart where you no longer desire going to that sin. And so eventually you, you leave it completely all together. And that's, the, that's what God wants to have happen because he doesn't want you uh, in his kingdom. He doesn't want lawlessness in his kingdom. In fact, he can't have lawlessness in his kingdom because he's holy. He's just, he's good. And so he's willing to make you clean if you're willing to be made clean. But if you love your sin, he's going to let you remain in your sin. What you have to do is you have to hate your sin. And so I know when I was, when I was an atheist, I loved my sin. You know, that's what I did. I loved my sin. But if you, why are you shaking your head, my man? Come talk to me. Why are you shaking your head at the truth? We're here, we're here sharing the truth. I'm, I'm sorry, I can't hear you. I can't hear you, my man. Can you talk to me? You're just going to walk and shake your head, huh? I can't, I can't hear you. I want to I wanna talk to you. I want to have a conversation with you. I want to have dialogue with you. I'm here sharing uh, the, the glorious gospel of Christ and you're shaking your head at me like in disgust. And I, I don't have any disgust with you. I care about you. I care about your soul. Not like Jesus can, because Jesus obviously cared about your soul so much that he died on a cross for you, that he shed his blood for you. I can't hear you, my friend. I, I would love to have a conversation with you, but if you hate Jesus, I can't, I can't do that. How you doing, my man? God bless you. You love Jesus? You're born again? You're following him? Okay, God bless you, my man. You, you gotta, you gotta follow him. You gotta put your faith in him. He's coming soon, you know. And so he's looking for his church without spot, wrinkle, or blemish. And he doesn't want us to be lukewarm. He wants us to be on fire for him. So make sure you're reading your Bible and seeking his will over your life daily. All right? I definitely appreciate your, 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 your. Yeah, I, I, I appreciate your support, my man. But I, I really want to see. I want to see you in heaven. So if you know, we, it's by grace we we are saved through faith, not of works. It's the gift of God. It's the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. So we were saved by grace, but it's through faith, right? So the Bible says uh, Abraham believed God, and it was accounted to him for righteousness. So it's trusting. It's fully putting your uh, full faith and trust in Jesus, so that when you're seeking His His way by way of the work, by way of uh, His work, that He's doing His cleansing work in your heart, so you're not going to sin anymore. Like you're not going going to getting uh parties and getting drunk you're not fornicating you know you're he's doing a work in your heart where you no longer desire those things and that's what that's what uh your own personal miracle will be when the holy spirit dwells in you and gives you those desires so god bless you what's your name man dominic nice to meet you dominic i'm rome like italy nice to meet you thank you for your support man keep following jesus that's why god said not not to have sex outside of marriage all the heartaches it causes all the STDs it spreads, all this drama and headache and heartache that it causes, and 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 not raising a you know your your child in a in a home where both the father and mother are involved. Yes, there are single parents that that do a very you know good job, and it's very difficult, and 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 they're able to do it. But it's much easier when you have both the father and the mother. Because a kid needs both the mother and the father. A baby needs both the mother's love and the father's love. We're here to encourage you to, to obey God, to fear God, to keep his commandments. Jesus said, if you love me, you would keep my commandments. The Bible says, and by this we know that we know him. If we keep his commandments. He who says that they know Jesus and do not keep his commandments the bible calls him a liar the bible says this then is the message that we heard of him and we declared unto you that god is light and in him is no darkness at all we claim to have fellowship with him and walk in darkness we lie and do not the truth but if we walk in the light as he's in the light we have fellowship with one another the blood of jesus christ his son cleanses us from all sin can have all of our sins forgiven by what Jesus Christ did on the cross. He, 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 he just he paid for all of our sins. No matter what we what we look through, no matter what we do, we cannot have that forgiveness other than what Jesus Christ did on the cross. All right. Hope you're born again, sir. Hope you're born again. What does it mean to be born again? Great question. 
Be born again means that once you once you repent of your sins and you ask for forgiveness and you get baptized, the old you dies in a, a spiritual death and you're given the Holy Spirit. It's in the book of John. It, it's described as the, the comforter. Jesus will send you the Holy Spirit to live inside of you. The Bible says that the old things will pass away. Behold, all things become new. And you become a new person. You become a new creature. You're, it's a spiritual birth. You're, you're being born again spiritually. And you can be born again today. You can have your sins forgiven and, and become a new person spiritually. Where you will despise the things that you used to love. You despise the, the, the things that did, did, did not line up with God's God's will. All the times that you love to sin, love to lie, love to fight, love to be angry, love to, you know, to fornicate and, and use people physically, love to smoke, love to get drunk, love to be rebellious, love to, you know, lust after someone. Whatever, whatever your sin, it, you know, is or was, you, those things will, will change. You'll see this world in a different light, in a different view. And it's free. That's why, you know, we're, we're, we're all without excuse, you know. Everybody knows God exists. Everyone knows God exists. If you, if you believe in absolute truth and you believe in absolute morality, Without God, there's no way of justifying it. Without God, it becomes subjective. Without God, it just becomes your opinion. But we don't live like that. We we live we live by absolutes in, in this world. We you know you you absolutely know that you're in GMU today. You absolutely know that you go to you're registered and you go to school here. You absolutely know that murdering someone or killing someone or raping someone is absolutely wrong why because we have a standard we have god's character we have a standard outside of us that's eternal that doesn't change that doesn't change with our society it's universal and it's eternal but but why do we reject it we reject it because for one reason i know why i rejected it i rejected it before I was saved is because I loved my sin. I knew that if I if I admitted to 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 God, uh, you know, you know, not wanting me to fornicate, if I admitted God and not wanting me to lie, then that means I would have to stop those things. So we deceive ourselves as thinking, ah, there, there must be something else, and we start renaming God. We start calling Him energy. We start calling Him this higher power. You start saying, you know, there's something out there. I don't know what it is, but there's something out there. That's deception. It's also idolatry. But you have this world of evidence, eyewitnesses, historical books, all this uh, evidence of scientific evidence, uh, as well as, you know, something cannot come from nothing. You have all these evidence, but all of a sudden that's not good for you. That's not enough. It doesn't meet your criteria standard but but saying oh there must be some kind of higher power out there without any evidence and all of a sudden you're it meets your criteria we hear GMU to again warn you of the afterlife warn you of judgment to come we say this in love but we you know we say it in truth we have to we have to warn you this is a warning I know that you're plenty of entertainment. There's a lot of entertainment in the world. We're not here to entertain you. We're not here to sugarcoat things. We just want you to know the truth. We want you to know the truth. That way you can make the right decision. It's ultimately no one can force you. You have to have that change of heart. No one can force you into becoming a Christian. No one can force you into believing something. You know, but we, we just want to encourage you to say, hey, look at the evidence. Read the Bible. You know, you can read the gospel in, in, in a few short weeks. It's only four books. Especially you, I mean, you, you're you're in school. That's all you're doing is reading and writing. You have no excuse not to pick up one more book and to read it. Especially since your soul depends uh, uh, on it. 
Don't gamble with your soul. There's nothing in this world worth giving up your soul for eternity. The Bible says, whoever desires to save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake and the gospel will save it. But what does it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his soul? But what will a man give in exchange for his soul? What will you give in exchange for your soul? A college party on Friday night, is that worth giving up your soul for? A cake party, let's add some beer to it, is that worth giving up your soul for for eternity? How about a few minutes of, of sexual uh, pleasure, is that worth giving up your sin for, I'm sorry, you're giving up your soul for eternity? Well, at least you're admitting it, sir, but it's wrong. You, you're going to change your mind. You're going to change your mind. If you're burning in hell, you're going to say, oh, man, that's not worth it. That's not worth it. You're just being prideful, sir. Think about your afterlife. We care about you. We care about you. No sexual sin is worth giving up your eternity in heaven. Think about your afterlife. Your soul will live somewhere for eternity. We want we want you to we want you to live in heaven. You can have forgiveness, it's free. Why would anyone deny it? Why would anyone say no, I don't want forgiveness? No, I, I you know I, I don't wanna go to heaven. You know, and heaven is everything that we try to make here. We fight tooth and nail to pass laws to make things safe. We do so many things here to keep our children safe. We do so many, we pass so many laws to keep our neighborhood safe. Everything from keeping criminals out with neighborhood watch. What else do we do? We, 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 we ask for the police department to, to patrol our neighborhoods so no one's getting hurt. We, we even put up parking signs where we don't want certain places blocked. We do so many things in life to, to create this world that we can have peace and comfort. But the moment you're offered heaven where there's no pain, no tears, no heartache, no death, no sickness, no disease. As soon as you're offered that, all of a sudden it's not good. It's not good enough. You don't want it. I'd rather die and go to hell. I'd rather serve Satan, the one who hates me, the one who lies to me. How, Ill how illogical and deceptive can you be to thinking that to love the one that hates you, to love the one who lies to you, and to choose to go to hell? You know, it's your choice. It's your choice where you want to go. It's your choice. It's your decision. You cannot blame God. God did not create hell for us. He created for Satan. He didn't create hell for us. But God loves you so much that he's not going to force you to live to, to spend eternity with him. If you don't want to spend eternity with him, God's going to keep you separated. He's going to keep you out of his kingdom, out of his house. But I tell you one thing, you're going to regret it. And you have to do it now before it's too late. You can't go into hell and say, oh, these guys, these crazy Christians on my campus were right. I made a mistake. Let's rewind that, God. Let's 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 go back. Let's skip back a, 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 a few days and, and let me repent. It's going to be too late. The time is now. While you have breath in your lungs, harden not your heart. Don't harden your heart against God. He wants a relationship with you. He made it free. It's not in his will that any should perish, but all to come to repentance. God doesn't want any to perish. Contrary to what you're told, that he's hateful and 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 he, and he wants to judge everyone. No, he, 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 he is going to judge, but he's a righteous judge. But he's going to, he's offering you forgiveness now. He's pleading with you. He sends preachers out. He makes his book available. He gives you knowledge. You have a conscience. You know, conscience means that you're with knowledge. You know, you can't deny knowledge. It's a fallacy to t try to deny. It's a contradiction. It's self-refuting to try to deny your knowledge. 
You have a conscience that convicts you when you do something wrong. No one can say I didn't know what I did was wrong when it comes to breaking God's law, when it comes to breaking, doing something immoral. You know when you're doing something wrong. It convicts you, your heart convicts you, your conscience convicts you. Now we have a tendency to sear our conscience you know, until until it's, you, know, you, you can even you know sear it to the point where it's not working anymore. It's like hitting that snooze button on your alarm clock over and over and over, and at some point it just stops. It stops beeping, and that's how, how our conscience is. You do the same thing, you know, you sin and sin and sin and sin, and at some point your conscience stops convicting you. That's a terrible place to be. If you're convicted of the message you're hearing today, your conscience is still working. We plead, we plead with you to, to, to take that action. We plead with you to come forward and, and, and let us pray for you, or at least give, talk to you and give you some information. The things that you hear about God, the things that you hear about the Bible, often are misrepresented. Often they are straw man arguments. Don't let other people make up your mind for you about God. It's your soul. You're not going to stand before God and say, I heard Joe Rogan say this on his podcast. I heard this scientist say this on his, or I read it in his book. God's not going to take those excuses. You have every opportunity while you have breath in your lungs today to seek God. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. The Bible says, let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts and let him return unto the Lord while he have mercy upon him and to our God which will abundantly pardon. Seek the Lord today while you have breath in your lungs. 